Welcome. In front of me is a POCO C85 and today I will show you how we can go through the setup process of this device. So when you boot it up for the very first time after taking it out of the box, you will be presented with the same screen that you can see on my end. And we just have a one option to press on the arrow, which takes us to the language selection page. From here, find the language that you want to use and move on to the next page, which then allows you to choose your region. I recommend choosing anything that is in European Union as we have just better consumer rights. Next we have terms and conditions, we have user agreement and privacy policy. Swiping down you will see we have the box to check that we have, um, have read and agreed to the user agreement and privacy policy. Uh, I have never read a single word of it so I'm pretty sure we all do the same thing. Uh, I value my time a little bit more. Now moving on, we have set up uh, using another device. So if you have another phone, old one, you'll get this pop-up on it. Uh, which allows you to basically transfer over anything that is stored on the cloud from or could be cloud stored like contact messages and so on to this one now you can do this but there is also another application pre-installed on here that you can utilize uh, that might be just a little bit better um, so i'm gonna select skip next checking for sim card so it's gonna look if there is a sim card if there isn't you can insert one right away or you can click on next it's not that important same thing goes for the network uh, we can connect to it or skip it for now now if you choose to skip it it doesn't actually give us any kind of information but normally you won't be able to sign into your google account get software updates and have the date and time set automatically now this can all be changed later on after the setup is completed uh, so you don't really need to worry all that much if you just want to start using the device right away now on here on this page we have the option to select screen lock and we have three different options to protect our device or three methods along with uh, uh, the screen lock itself having three different uh, unlocking methods so here we have pin pattern or password and we have fingerprint and face recognition now the two latter ones are basically biometrics and biometrics aren't always 100 percent reliable so the device will force you uh, no matter if you use one or both to always select a pin pattern or password in those times where the device is a CC bit and uh, won't unlock either using your face or your finger uh, which would leave you with the one that doesn't get just aneurysm and refuses to unlock your device for no reason anyway uh, I'm gonna be skipping this now I don't recommend skipping the protection of your device as it does hold your personal data so if you ever lose your device it's obviously there for taking for anyone who finds it so just protect your device um, now moving on we have google services like location scanning and sending user and diagnostic data now we can turn all of them off like this it looks like it's off but let's not kid ourselves it's google they have a multitude of different ways of tracking and spying on you with or without your permission so you can toggle that off but don't be fooled for a second that it actually matters much um if it did companies like google wouldn't be in antitrust lawsuits it's not like out of thin air that they find themselves in problems like this um anyway moving on we have basic settings Again, we have location. Now these are from Xiaomi, so you can turn that off. Automatic system updates, uh, send user in diagnostic data. As I said, these are from Xiaomi. They seem like they're repeating because they are. Now, one of the most egregious options in here is the personalized ads. Uh, I also want to show that I turned these off without any kind of problem. Why are you giving me shit for this one? Can't you just turn yourself off? And furthermore, Xiaomi tries to be cheeky little shits right here and does the reverse psychology and reverse button swapping so typically blue button on the right on android uniformly is a confirmation of an action my action is i want to turn it off confirmation would be yes turn it off right here so they swap it around to the other side and they also reverse the color so uh, to complete the f with you so you don't turn that off now the reason for that is is because by 
personalized ads, what it actually means is gather data on you and sell it so you can get ads that are based on what you search for. If it sounds intrusive, that's because it totally is. So let's turn off. Uh, you can go over all the other ones, but I just wanted to talk about the personalized ads. And anyway, let's move on to the next page, which allows us to turn on parental control so we can uh, track your children. Next, font settings, just two options for you to choose from. They don't dif differ that much, as you can see. And I see here it looks more like a bigger version of the other one, so not much for a font setting. Moving on, we have a setup lock screen. Now, this is the wallpaper carousel. Now, right here we have a okay selection of wallpapers that it showcases as example but be wary of it some of the wallpapers that you might encounter if you choose to enable this uh, will be just kind of random like brick wall or maybe luggages like suitcases or stuff like that so i personally don't like this as it's changing wallpaper every single time you press the power button to wake up the device when you have a screen lock so basically Okay, I can't show it because I don't have the little, you know, swipe up to unlock. But in that moment where you press the power button and you have to swipe up to unlock your device, uh, that's where you would see that wallpaper from the wallpaper carousel. Uh, and it changes every time the screen basically falls asleep and you press the power button to wake it up. So I like to skip this. Next we have uh, select your default launcher uh, or basically how your apps are being stored. Now we have the classic, which is the classic for iPhones last time I checked this isn't one uh, and then we have the app drawer which is classic for Android and it's what I'm gonna stick with now it stores all the applications in an app drawer and you can still have apps on your home screen but obviously uh, it's just much more organized with the app drawer having everything stored alphabetically next we have navigation mode we have full screen gestures or just gestures for short and button navigation you can choose whichever one you prefer. I like gestures which are selected by default, so I'm just gonna click on next. And this uh, finishes up the setup, and in a second, either it's gonna take us to home screen or we can swipe up to take ourselves to the home screen. Goodness me, it's preparing this device longer than the reset takes. I might pause the video just so I don't waste your time, so... Okay, so it's finally finished. Let's click continue. Took about a, one more minute after pausing the video. And here we go. Here is our home screen. So, if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.